Do you miss playing Dungeons and Dragons or just have a hard time finding a group in your hometown? Maybe you just wish you could play more. On Discord, we created a community of over 100 people who are playing D&D around the clock. By integrating Discord and D&D Beyond, we're able to provide an immersive experience that is the first of its kind. You can create a character from 1st to 15th level and then roleplay 24-7 in our Discord channels while combating monsters, crafting weapons, training new skills, and searching for items across our campaign world. You'll also have the chance to participate in random combat encounters and go on monthly virtual quests. Ever wanted to try your hand at being a dungeon master? Or maybe you're an experienced dungeon master and just want the chance to run more adventures. As a community DM, you can run encounters and virtual quests for the community based on monthly modules written by our very own accomplished plot team. Join us. Join us. Check it out. Join the Discord. Join us. Join us. And let's create incredible stories together. Is money really worth all this? It's not about the credits. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I bet you have. You're not getting the drop on the villains with sounds like that. Your game needs Sirenscape. The Sirenscape online player has a huge library of epic sounds for any situation. Epic games need epic sound. Go to Sirenscape.com to get started today. Hey, Dr. Dane at Cream Tattoo Supply here. Do you need a remedy for your corporate gouging woes and your tattoo supplies? Well, I'm here to tell you, I've got the solution. We've got cream cartridges. And I know what you're saying. Hey, Dr. Dane, is it gonna cost a lot? It's not gonna cost a lot. It's gonna cost just the right amount. Economically friendly. Do you wanna support a tattooer owned and operated business? I know I do. Head on over to creamtattoosupply.com or come to our storefront at 1102 East Prospect Street in Indianapolis, Indiana. Dr. Dane never has or never will be a doctor. If you or someone you love has been affected by Monopoly Tattoo Companies, please go to creamtattoosupply.com for your supply acquisitions. It is said that the ancient Forge Masters would infuse a part of their souls into their creations, imbuing courage, strength, and grace with each strike of the hammer. But somewhere deep in a dwarven hall, the last of the Forge Masters is hard at work.
What is up, party people? And welcome back to the Incubus, where we've gathered some incredibly talented and notable tattooers. I, I do want to take a second. Like, if, if you haven't checked out uh, all the incredible talent that's, that's at this table, uh, I, I believe we have almost every side of the US that uh, from just this cast alone of just incredible artwork of different styles. Um, you can find us all on Realmsmith's uh, channel and get contact information for all the tattoo stuff if that's something you're interested in. Be sure to go check out all the artists here. Uh, I think throughout the, the show, everybody's been going and like just drawing stuff and everything. And the artwork that's been created for this is already insane. And to, to put these real life tattooers into a world like Eberron, just playing tattooers, um, it's been a really cool experience. So thank you guys and, and thank you Cassidy for uh, being the shop hand that holds us all together. Make sure that we stay as yeah. well organized as we can. Yeah. And, um, this has been amazing. Thank you all. And thank you to the sponsors and to the amazing people that you know uh, build up this this amazing creation that allows us to do what we do. Uh, to Dungeons and Dragons uh, for creating such an immersive world. Uh, D&D 5e is uh, by far my favorite edition. I started on 3.5. Yeah. Um, and I played some fourth edition, a little bit of second edition, and nothing quite matches at least the feel of play that I like to play. I like 5e and it's just really fun to it's easy to get new people interested into you don't have to have all the bells and whistles to play this game you can do it with just pieces of paper and a coin if you want mm -hmm. so thank you Dungeons and Dragons for creating such an amazing immersive experience um, Beetle and Grimm's the amazing sponsors mm -hmm. title sponsors mm -hmm. of the show um, providing the mm -hmm. gold edition so Eberron box with all the goodies man we, we've got some dragon shards we we got featherfall tokens the, the amazing maps and terrain that cr they create as well as like especially on the DM side where they have little individual packets of the entire Eberron book broken down uh, in fact if you want to get one of your own for a chance, uh, if you want to, they're going to be giving away this episode, uh, Gold Edition Ebron box uh, to somebody in the chat. Just type into the chat, Beetle and Grimms. Um, only enter once. If you enter more than once, you will be disqualified. And then we will be finding the, the winner and getting a hold of you to give you your own immersive box. Uh, Dude, so that's a big... That's a thing. It's a lot oh, of There's a lot like, of stuff. Big thing. They're, they're yeah. huge. Like uh, going through, like it's uh, sprawled out. Like when I've been getting prepared for this, uh, Kelly, my girlfriend, like I have everything like spread out. And the one of the first things she said when I was getting ready for this, and I look like uh, the dude from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where I'm just like scattering it. Around. <laughs> she, she literally walks in. She hasn't had the, the pleasure to play DD yet. She goes, I didn't know it could be like that though. Like, and all I had was like all this Ebron mm -hmm. like yeah. box stuff around where it has like little tactile stuff and all the different pamphlets and the amazing artwork that's in it. Um, so yeah, be sure to put Beetle and Grimm's in the chat for your chance to win one because they're so fucking worth it. Um, second title sponsor is Ink Addict. Uh, thank you guys, Ben, and the rest of the team at Ink Addict for uh, making our shirts, our merchandise. Uh, there's a link in the description below that you can go and check out and get your own Incubus merch. Uh, each of the artists here have collaborated and made our own shirts that you can get. You can also get just the Incubus logo. Um, it's They've been so wonderful to work with, bouncing back and forth. I think uh, each of us are also going to be contributing, you know, uh, separately just some artwork that uh, will be on the, uh, the Ink Attic website. So be sure to get into the description below. If you sign up for their emails and or text, you'll get a 10% off code your first order. They also have set up a promo code for 20% off. It's Incubus Crit. So also massive thank you to Forged Gaming for making these dice and dice trays mm -hmm. and boxes. And, let's see, let's see, um, let's see. They, get it in there. Yeah. You know, uh, they always roll 20. It's yeah, the, <laughs> yes. yep, yep. They're, they're always so, twice. Always twice. They're legitimately oh, sharp. Oh, is it? Did you really roll a crit? Nope. No. Yes. Yep. Yes. 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 Sure yes. 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 The fact that they they took time to design like a dice specifically for Incubus oh, has yeah. been incredible. It, it, that's oh, yeah. uh, never in the world, Here, never in my life up. did I think I would. We could, I don't know if you can Here. zoom Here. zoom in on I 20. 
and the ink and the it's like a matching Ooh, thing right oh my yeah. God. it's like stylish over yeah. here theme. stylish you can carry your dice around with you and wear the shirt there you go this you have to put it like this everywhere hey everyone check it out hey my dice are down here <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, they oh, sell man. themselves uh, oh sorry John yep. <laughs> thank, so, done. so thank you everybody at Forged uh, for, for believing in what we're creating um, also uh, Cream Tattoo Supply Dane Smith and the entire crew mm. over there um, I, I've been using them for a few years now uh, every experience like them coming into the shop <laughs> that is more tattoo related to be pretty uh, transparent They they it's a tattoo supply company but they make super quality merchandise it's tattooer owned tattoo distributed um, and they're just amazing people every time I deal with them. Um, also, said it before, but the 14 thicks with three C's, chef's kiss. Ooh. Good stuff. Mm, mm, Roll those fat yeah. lines. Yeah. Thick lines. Papa likes it thick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Um, Ooh. To Sirenscape, to get away Ooh. from that. <laughs> to Sirenscape, um, thank you so much for uh, you know, providing the experience for the sound and for some of the sound effects that we're able to use. And to you know, the team behind the camera over here that's you know, making sure that we kind of correlate with the sounds and the immersion. Uh, John and Chris, uh, thank you guys for all you've been doing with all this and trying to deal with a whole bunch of delinquents at a table for mm -hmm. hours Weeks. on end. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, uh, on that note, to Realm Smith and the team of Realm Smith, thank you guys for uh, welcoming us. Ooh, going back to your really hero forge. Thank you guys so much for oh, these geez. amazing guys. Yeah, Seriously, uh, you can hey, customize them. However well, them. you like, they have tons of different arrangements that you can do. You get to pick the clothes, you get to pick the weapons, you can pick the the the. the the base that it's on mm -hmm. then um for yeah, so i know there's different kind of materials you can do so if you cool. like to do hand painted stuff yourself you can get the the premium uh Bullets. premium prints um you can also if oh, you'd cool. like yeah. to pick the colors yeah. and it'll individually you can it was so odd you can like almost drag and drop each portion you want colors at cool. i spent way too much time messing around with it um and jason okay. managed to get all these done in one or design these all in like one spurt like oh. a madman yeah. Um, so, uh, on that note, again, thank you to Realm Smith for opening your 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 table to us, to you know your arms with us, with friendship and to kindness and to uh, allowing us to be part of such a cool team. We really appreciate it. Um, to the Smith Guardians and the team behind Realm Smith for you know moderating everything, Realm Watchers for moderating the the chat, and to you Realm Realmers who watch it and are the 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 lifeblood that we create these stories for. It really thank you guys for everything. Be sure to subscribe, to share, tell your friends and family about it. For all you tattoo artists, when you're sitting there talking to a client for hours on end, why not tell a story about it? Tell them about us. I appreciate it. And without any further ado. Let's venture into Eberron, and not only Eberron, let's go into the Mornlands. back when we last left off you all had an excursion through town finding the arsonist who set the fire and learning a lot about yourselves what is a situation at hand learning more information that just asks more questions magvar learning about something about what's inside your chest mickey hearing some stuff about Hellbent, the person you have spent years with. 
There's a lot to digest with just information, leaving so many more questions than even just the one of trying to figure out what's going on. You all found Fumel, the arsonist, and Mickey in a form of retribution to get information, set fire to the house that he was in, and the Fumel himself with Yokai finishing it off. That is right. You, you killed that guy. Yeah, yeah. They only kill the campaign support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys traveled to Biblio Tattoo and spoke to the to the pilot of this airship, bringing you aboard, learning about the mysteries of Hellbent herself, creating a machine that was meant to put consciousness of somebody into a hollow warforged. You guys aborted the ship and began your travel where it would take a few days to get to where he dropped off Fumel. You guys got on board. You guys got a small box with inside something rattling around. Mickey managed to uh, actually daintily and tactfully blow open the, blow it up <laughs> and to find inside a dragon shard so trying to sh gain its way to Magvar's chest. You guys decided to close it up and close up for the night. As the morning came, you looked at the distance and you saw a just billowing wall of clouds, fog, something in the distance so large and massive. And as you all got closer, it seemed that there are faces that are just built pillaring up the sides. You guys begin your journey there as you see this in the distance. What are you all doing? How big are the faces that we see in it? Like um, considering the size... Buildings tall? Yes. Considering the size of this wall and the fact that you are still miles away and can oh, see God. the shapes of faces moving and writhing, they're gaunting in face, they're uh, writhing in agony. You can't tell defined features, but there's definitely movement and facial structure happening mm -hmm. on the edge there. <clears throat> what do you all do? What time is it? Did we? Did we it's ten it? around ten o'clock in the morning. It's okay, so we're about. all up and kind of getting we're just, going. We're just waking up. I uh, what we saw and recently we woke up. I stayed up all night to attempt to paint a painting, and mm -hmm. now I'm staring at this massive wall that I don't quite understand, but I do not think I like it. Yeah, can can real quick? Can you give me a performance check on? Let's see how you painted last night with oh, some yeah. sleep deprivation. And... Oh, yes, yeah. sweet. Ah, the old morning after. Old <laughs> you look at the painting after. again. You hate it. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, that was, that's a, oh uh, yeah, all right, that's what that is. Uh, <laughs> looks like I did eight. You know what? That is what that is. Yep. You woke up after some sleep deprivation, looked at it. Um, it's, it's not what you, it's not bad i mean you're you are an artist you've created something there's no such thing as bad art is the thing right but your expectations for yourself you didn't even come close to them it's there were so stakes with, with that. <laughs> there were stakes in this painting and there was a very specific goal that i did not achieve yeah i do have another idea okay there is one painting that i keep on me mm -hmm. and it uh happens to house my familiar okay justin Justin? Yes. Who's Justin? Oh, you haven't met Justin yet. I don't think so. Yeah. But I think soon you will. Oh my gosh. I would like to, when the time comes, just have that ready to show this elf. Okay. Yeah, as you keep it, uh, the canvas, um, when it's, uh, you normally keep it on you. It's rolled up into a tube on your back where you like to keep some of your favorite paintings. That one itself is in a, a very specific uh, tube that you keep it in. So, around this time, you guys see uh, Drillidus is manning the ship. Ah, I hope you're all ready. Eerie, who coming up the steps down from below on the opposite side of where you were, Narf, mm -hmm. now has a, their shirt off. Um, as they come up, you see the Sphinx tabaxi. Uh, though tall and the, the trench coat they were wearing was very deceiving as their build. Because though they are tall, they're lean and so 
skinny and narrow, but uh, their ribs come down and you see wrinkles as, you know, even as they walk, they lift their arms and they have just a little bit of skin that just uh, connects on the edges. Um, they have two blackout sleeves that go all the way down to their wrists. You see that there is, um, now that they don't have their hat on, there's piercings that line all the way around and down the backs of their ears. Um, they have the barbed wire tattooed on their forehead and a dagger tattooed on their eye. They come up and they're like, hello. Is this your first time to the Mornlands? It is for me. Yes, I think. I haven't seen a uh, wall like that in my time. Dara uh, feels deeply disturbed and is, just kind of looks up and is like, it's been a while. Mm. It's uh, it's quite the trip. I I feel it in my duty as somebody who tries to mend this ship. You won't be with us long as we are taking you to a destination. I'd like to see you back in Bibliotet too. I'd like to tell you some things about what you're going to experience. I don't know. It's unbeknownst to what happens in behind the fogs and what's in the fogs. Be careful, please. Healing magic doesn't work the same as it does here. Pardon for you, Warforged. Um, seems as though that uh, the more automaton type aren't affected by the mornings in the same way that uh, us of flesh are. But one thing's for certain, death is different for you as well there. There's no coming back if you die in the morning nights. Not for anybody. So be careful. If you see bodies on the ground, they may be centuries old. There's no decay. Only death. Hmm. Well, that was. I'm sorry. Pleasant. Sounds cool. That was. That was a little bit of a damper. I'm sorry about that. Would anybody like a beverage? Mm-hmm. Awesome. You can go get it yourself. I got you one last night. <laughs> Sassy. Yeah. <laughs> In earnest, though, I. Uh, looks around. You are all covered in tattoos. You work in the tattoo world, it seems. Not a single piercing. Not a one. <laughs> I don't have mine. Nah, I mean, I, I have mine. Right? Yeah, as you turn your head. Dara has her nose pierced. They see and like, ah, nice, nice. These are pretty jewels and gems. I look over. I like it. I like it. I'm more partial to that experience myself. Uh, despite, and you, they gesture towards the sleeves. Despite all that, and in the process of covering up some old work, I found that easier. Also keeps me warm in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know a thing or two about that. <laughs> Fur. Yeah. Just be careful in the morning. Robbing it into the hairless cat that shouldn't have any fur. I, uh, yeah, that sucks. Maybe you should grow some. I wish. <laughs> yeah, uh, it does get chilly in the morning lands, but it also gets hot. Spells live. Memories. And you see the, the smile that has been on this wrinkly face that was curled across their chin just drops. Memories hurt sometimes more. Um. Just be careful of the fogs. They they come in different shapes, different sizes. Um, <laughs> I hope to see you all again. I really do, and hear your story. I'm out, and you see them turn around and start to walk away. <laughs> that was welcoming. <clears throat> yeah, that's one way to put it. Oh, it's kind of just like talking to one of you. I hate that guy. 
<laughs> Not the biggest fan, no. So, shall we? Is there anything we need to prepare ourselves to? Sounds like we're jumping out of the ship. Right. We all have those tokens handy. Mm hmm. Oh. We all make sure, check your pouches. Things mm -hmm. snapped in. Make sure they're not flying away or disappearing somewhere. All right. All it right. seems as though you guys are getting about uh, probably a mile, mile or so as what, even at a distance, was grandeur. Mm -hmm. As you get closer, you see that you've been lowered in altitude for some reason, but it seems that even now, like you almost a mile away, the threshold of the horizon is just getting smaller and smaller as you guys get closer and closer. You notice the this, the rolling faces on the fog now at this this distance have different genders, face, race. Uh, uh, they are writhing in pain. Some of them are trying to mouth things, but it's silent as you guys begin to approach. Is there any conversations, anything that needs to be done as you guys get closer to the morning ends? How fast are we following? How fast? Yes. I believe, so that I can make sure that we are it's going in the correct space, I believe it goes, um, I mean, it's an airship. I believe it's somewhere like 60 to 100 miles per hour, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, that's a really fast fall. Yeah. Hmm? It's a fast fall. <clears throat> oh, you falling is probably oh. faster than that. This is going forward. Oh, yes. I thought you were, sorry, I thought you were asking how fast is this fall? Mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, oh no, you haven't fall, fallen yet. You, yeah, yeah, I know. So, right. Do we have the mechanics for how these tokens work? Um, um, Bit of a meta question, I just want to make sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and check it out real quick. Cool. So, <laughs> trying to find things around. Feather fall tokens. I believe they just uh, allow you to single use, not once a day, single use, to utilize the slow fall spell. This metal, small. Yeah. S slow fall or fe feather fall? This small metal disc inscribed with the image of Feather, which is, I believe, from the uh, City of Towers book. When you fall at least 20 feet while the token is in your person, you descend 60 feet per round and take no damage from falling. The token's magic is expended after you land, whereupon the disc becomes non-magical. Oh, great. So, single use. You start falling at 60 feet around, so 10 feet a second, you start in retrospect from free fall, just... Sure, sure. Awesome. Cool. I work. imagine it's, I mean, 60 feet around, that's that's still pretty good. You're like, Phew. Yeah. And you just stop. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say it's more like falling with style. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you guys approach, you guys hear Diligris from a distance. You see him grab the wheel with both hands. And you start to see him grab on it with just a mighty form. And he's like, everybody hold on. As you guys start to get just 100 feet, 50 feet. And now there is no sky. As you guys start to get close, you look up and it is just faces. As you start to approach, a massive face starts to come from the fog and the mouth opens up and the sky ship goes directly into the mouth. And as you guys fly through it, it only takes a matter of seconds before you, it's, you are hit with mist and water and vapor and you start to feel sadness and drained. Something changes in your nature as you guys crest through and it's an entire different world here. Mm. The deserts of Elinor are gone. You are no longer in a plains field of sand and, and t uh, shades of brown. Everything that upon your vision is gray, muted. There's fog that ripples the ground down below, even as you look over the edges. Life is gone. The trees that stand there in the distance, leafless. There is mounds. You see that there are buildings that have been crumbled with time as you guys start to make your way into the Mornlands. After you guys come through the threshold of this, Diligris lets go of the wheel, comes down. You see him go, and 
as he lets go of it, he almost the the light on the back of his neck glows, and the the wheel itself radiates, and he's like, okay, comes down to you guys. We have a little bit left to go. We are not out of the woods. It's dangerous here. From the looks on your face, and from uh, what you can gather, as he looks around to the silence, you hear in the distance, Gah! you look in the distance and there's nothing. You start to hear whispers. Yes, yes. Look around, and there's nothing. I'd like to say uh, you get used to that but you don't. It's hard to tell what's real and what's not here, but everything is a real danger, even if it's not real. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the head. You guys can be amongst yourself for a little bit. I'd say if you have a plan, try and dish it out. If you don't have a plan, if you don't know where you're going, try to make a plan. The shorter amount of time that you're here, the better. I'll be off. You see him turn around and he goes back to the stead, or to the wheel. What do you guys do? Mickey, uh, where are we on the deck? Wherever you would like to be. You guys can be at the, the head of it there. You guys can be around. You guys can go to a cabin. Then you tell me. You can go down to the art studio. Are we all together? <laughs> I would say yeah. Is Narf with us? I would say. I am now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In the morning, I went up first. Yeah. I'm calling a shop meeting. Shop meeting. Oh, oh man, meeting. I hate these. <laughs> let's, let's do it early, early in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah. I have an idea. On your day oh, off. God. On your day off. Yeah, someone's whatever got... your day off is, that's when the shop meeting is. Yeah, like someone's I'm... crying at this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's always somebody who doesn't show up. I don't know about you. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. There's always like one guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Where do you have your meeting at? I think we're gonna go to um... the most uncomfortable couch in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but two two people are standing. Too real. There's two not enough. There's not enough. Somebody's seating. on a rolly chair yeah. the whole fucking time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want everybody at home to know that is a business meeting at a tattoo shop. Yeah, 100%. yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody has uh, at least smoked four cigarettes and had four cups of coffee before they came in mm -hmm. at noon. It's coffee for me. Yeah. <laughs> There's bagels, but not the kind you like. No. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, and if it's your day off, uh, you're no, massively not. hungover. For no reason. Didn't oh, yeah. Just so hungover. The donuts that got, got, that got bought for the meeting are not, they, they're like uh, from the pastry, but you just got them at the gas station oh, and they're like right, a little right, bit right. older. That's right. like probably yesterday's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. For those of you who don't have the day off have to tattoo the entire rest of the day yeah. in a bad mood. <laughs> 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 for accomplishing nothing for two nothing. hours in the meeting. Oh yeah, nothing happens really in the meeting important. except everybody just... Um, Tiffle digs at each other because they're pissed. <laughs> it's 9.30 in the morning. I am so glad I work alone now. Oh, I, honest, I haven't had that in years. I mean, to be honest, I I have loved the crew I'm with. Yeah. And like if we to have, be fair, we don't even really have to be love fair. To be fair. To be fair. <laughs> All right, there, that was bound to happen once. You, where are you guys at? <laughs> and where's can the we, so can we see anything off the sides of the ship? Like, what's the the, the viewpoint look like now? Okay. That we fall, so fall into smell. you are no longer uh, in the exceedingly high as four or five hundred, but you are probably mm, about. 150 feet in the air, maybe 200. Um, you look down, and what you see in this area is disturbing. You see bodies laying everywhere, especially on as you start to look back. It starts the, the bodies as you go farther. Don't there doesn't seem to be as many. There's specifically, like underneath you and near the edge of the fog of the wall of the entrance of the Mornlands, riddled with bodies. Some, as you, from this distance, it's hard to tell the wounds or anything, mechanism of death. You kind of gather in one way, shape, or form. These are people who tried to leave in the morning, after the morning, trying to race their lives. But that's what you see below. Scattered bodies, you see some pillars, you see some old buildings that have been detrimental with time. You do see some monsters, some creatures with hunk, uh, huge shoulders that are mounding over. 
and grabbing bodies and taking bites out of them. You see some large shell going over and it's just dragging bodies back and forth. Those are all the people that tried to leave the shop meeting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this place is metal. They never made it out. Mm-hmm. Can we discern um, like the uh, the classes, like races of the uh, different bodies? Are they all human, humanoid? Do we know? Uh, e- everything and anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. there's tons of r- riddled, uh, monstrous bodies mm-hmm. and abjuration bodies. And the, there's uh, you know humanoids of all shapes, size, form, age. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Mickey? Who's our point of contact here? I think we. Um... I think we try to get to like the like most like furthest northern point of the ship, like right at the front, so okay. we can get like the best view. kind of view and vantage point of, of where we're going in and where we're gonna land. And I really think that I know I haven't said much in the past couple of days, but I really do think coming in here, you know, if we're not tight, we're not organized, we're not communicating, it's gonna make it really hard to survive. Would Dara remember the general layout of the Moorland, even though? Hmm. I'm going to have you roll a history check for me. I'll have you do with advantage, since you are from the previous lands that were here. Oh, great. That is a 19. 19? Yep, 19. Nice. Cool. I feel you. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. You're suddenly good with directions. <clears throat> <laughs> I am playing Dara, not Cassidy. I just, maybe you've done that before with the caravan or something for, mm-hmm. say, seven or eight hours. I don't know. Maybe, maybe less, maybe more. You are. <laughs> um, Put your claws away. God damn. <laughs> God damn. There's a cranky head. <laughs> yeah, where's the cranky pen? <laughs> you are familiar with the Mornlands. You're familiar with the world that used to be here. Everything's different. This is by you probably have traveled these areas completely unreminisced at this point. It's a ghost of what you remember, but you know if we entered at this point, and it's somewhere between three days travel, it kind of gets you close the metro outside of it somewhere around it and the trajectory you're going it may be um closer to the glass plateau kind of depends on the even as you look up the sun that was bright and you know uh, illuminating and bearing down with heat as you look up it's a gray sky above you it's hard to perceive north, south, east, and west. Mm -hmm. But you're familiar, uh, at least with the area that you could be going to. Depending on direction, you could be going out on the outskirts of the Glass Plateau or on the outskirts of Metro. And that's what you gather. Okay. Um, So I relay that to the group and with a just big hollow sigh just kind of also look down and just say another home completely changed completely destroyed to let to let everyone here know that um, and those at home the Mornlands and everyone here would know because it's what stopped the war, the last war that Warforts were created for. The morning happened out of nowhere. Uh, in the midst of a great war, something happened in a land of Siri that devastated every bit of it. It created it, what you're in now. No one knows what created it. No one was knows what started it. No one is taking acceptance. Was it a mishap of the the marks of making who were attempting to create one thing or another? Was it a magical outburst of technological deeds? Or was it just nature taking its course? 
no one will know. No one knows yet. But that's where you're at, is the remnants of Sire, Siri. I've heard it pronounced both. <clears throat> you're from this place? Yes. I spend a lot of my time here being raised by Gildy, who I believed to be my great-grandmother. Um, she could, took care of me even growing up on the streets of Sharn. She looked after me when my parents could not, when they were incapable and incapacitated. I didn't have anything then, but I had Gildy. And as time went on and she grew older, I took care of her too. If I hadn't gone looking for one day, I might have been able to save her. But she perished during the day of mourning. I miss her so much. The winds outside crash, you guys feel a jostle, and you guys straighten arrow again. Magvar pulls Dara close and puts his, his shawl like over her head. <laughs> like completely, like a ghost? No! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, no, just like, you know, just kind of like, like, like it's on his head, just puts on her head too. Yeah. All right. All right, well, I mean, I think we need to talk a little bit about what's going on. Right. Another, we're taking a ride. We have taken a ride into the Moorlands. But how do we begin to search for help at within? I think this all, in some weird way, is obviously connected. What's happening with you? What's happening with Hell? Flamel? You yeah, know, I, I believe what he said. You know, I was... I don't agree with everything he did, and maybe not everything I did. And maybe I was acting out of, but I really do feel like everything that happened is leading us to this place, and I think we should all just be on the same page. If uh, if the journal's right, then you know, Femel might still be out there somewhere. But as a war forge. Tork said that he used to be one. There could be something happening. Some kind of body changing war forge. I've never heard of that before. This place seems to make about as much sense as you normally do, Mickey. Um, with that in mind, what we have us do. Narf, when you... When you saw the vision of Ulkas being killed, yes. you saw three warforged on steeds. I did. And... So did Femel. Yes, he did. And that's who we're after. Could you make it to the Mornlands simply on a steed? If you were a warforged. Yes. And what is it? Near the side of snow horse. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, one as glorious and large as uh, these that I did see, I would imagine it would be easy. I guess we're just lucky we're starting at such a great vantage point. I wouldn't want to be down there walking into that. If Hellbent, and I don't know how I don't know this from being with her all this time, if she is involved with this, she was missing, now this happens, all in the same time, they could be using her. You know, if we only know 
she's there right now, and they're forcing her to do this. You think she's completed the research she was working on? Put a, a living soul inside of a warforge and essentially become immortal? I mean, if any of this is true, then maybe a lot of what about her, I know about her, but we know about her, yeah. Let's not make any we'll assumptions. She she took us all in. And we owe her our, our careers, our, our homes, our lives, livelihoods. I don't I don't want to start assuming that she's not the person that we thought she was. <coughs> Until she can explain herself. She's family. She's the reason that we are all family. We owe her that. I mean she's the only one I've ever been able to rely on. But I mean now there's just you know, a lot I need to get clarity about. I understand. Is there anything we can get clarity on from you? Let's start putting some pieces together first. Before we start, you know, trying to figure the whole story out. Vicky, do you have a mark? No. It was around that time. Wait, can I roll an inside out of piece? Of course you can. Okay. Oh, it's like a seven or something like that. Beaver, hard to read. It's around that time, you all notice fog starts to seep under the ste- under the door where you all are, and just billowing at your feet. And you hear, Narf, come out here! Narf! But why? I, I don't know what this is. You, you all don't hear it. Only Narf. Did anyone else hear that? Hear what? Can we see the fog? Hmm? Oh yeah, you see the fog. Are we in one of the cabins? The shop meeting? Yeah, we'll say you're in that center cabin. This one? Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Makes it easy. Let's move our minis. Yeah, move the minis over there. Pick a spot. Move everything. Pick a spot, pick a spot, pick a spot. (laughs) And which way is, where's the door at? Start over. Where's the door that we're going to put from here? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, the fogs come in. You start to hear that, Narf. The fog, it's... I think it's speaking. No one, no one else can hear this. Yokai, no, Yokai, you hear in your ear. If you don't stop sweeping that area until this area is clean, I'm gonna I fire kinda, you on the spot. I kind of snap up and I just... I look over at Narf and I go... I, mm. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't hear anything. There was a voice here. There is a voice here. And uh, it seems familiar. I kind of just keep my head down. Nothing. Just a slow, silent head swivel. (laughs) You all start to hear ding, 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 from outside. <clears throat> uh, I heard that. Was that the thing you were talking about? Not exactly, but that does require our attention. Sure, absolutely. Well, keep your wits about yeah. you, buddy. And I just kind of walk through the door. All right. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. As you all walk out, um, actually, um, hey, Jason. Could I get a little mini for a person? Doesn't have to be anything explicit. I just happened to think of this. As you guys walk out, <clears throat> you guys see that the person ringing the bell, it's not the captain. You see Eerie ringing it vigorously <clears throat> as there's fog that has taken over, not just ye. Nice. Wow, oh, I didn't what? even know that, that was That was, that was uh, really cool. Pretty disruptive. That was it. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It comes out of nowhere. It takes two, right? <laughs> um, it takes two. At the where's my wheel at? There we go. I'm gonna say it's right up in the front. I yeah. like that. Up in the front, you see that the captain is standing right there, and at the back, you get one more, and that'll be it. I got the rest I need. So at the back, you hear the bell. You hear. You see. Here, he's like. We need help! I can't see! As there's fog that's taking over everything. 
Almost. Not so oh, man, that was Palm, though, That was right? Palm, yeah. That was that a 20 was... throw, not an actual Yeah, right there. Um, <laughs> they're ringing the bell, and you guys look. I can't see! As fog has taken over everything. Narf, I want you to make a wisdom save for me. Okay. Oh, great. Oh, great. That's a, that's a nine. Nine total? Yes. Narf, you step outside, you look, and you, you hear Eerie. You barely see the silhouette in the distance of him ringing the bell. You look over to the left on the edge of the ship, and you see your, your brother standing there. Uh, Narf! Narf, it's you. What? Come here, give me a hug, please. And you feel compelled to move towards it. Oh, and so I'm going to five. What's your movement speed? Uh, the 30. Five, 10, 15. Um, let's for this, I'm gonna call, I like the envision this a little bigger. Okay. So it's going to be 10 feet per square. Is everybody okay with that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 10, 20, 30. You're As you're on the steps, and you see your brother on the edge of the ship, he's missing you. He's yearning for you. He's trying to embrace you in a hug. And I need everybody to go ahead and roll initiative for me. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> go. You go ahead and roll. I forgot it. Okay. Oh. So oh, see I... my brother, huh? That's a six. Oh, sick. No, six. Yes. Okay. Hell, sweet. sweet. Six? <laughs> I love six. It's my favorite initiative. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What a waste. Did you get a nat 20? Nat 20. All right. Two of them? Really? Yeah. yeah. Right. Nat 20 bros. We got, we got two nat 20s. That's our third nat 20 uh, in the second four third. episodes. Yeah. yeah. When it doesn't matter. All right. I need 20 and above. Yeah. Hey, that's us. What's your uh, number? 20. 20 total? So, yeah, 20. What's well, uh, nat 20 is. I'm going to guess. Do you want my initiative no, wait, like a nat What's your initiative bonus if you have one? 22. Zero. You're oh, kind. I do not wait. I don't win. I don't want to go first. Magmar. I don't want to go yeah. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. 20. Go ahead. 15 to 20. Actually, maybe I do. Like 15 to 20, anybody? Oh, oh, I have 15. 15. We got Dara. 10 to 15. 10. Mickey. And I'm going to guess Narf. Obviously, I'm fairly shaken. I rolled a three. Well, that works out because you just went. <laughs> so. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. All right. How is any of this possible? So, going to do one thing real quick. Don't like that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they got the same thing. All right. <clears throat> First up, as the fog takes over, the wind around you is dead. How's the fog moving on the ship? How are you moving in a ship when the fog is still? Then you guys start to feel. Chip, 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 chip. You feel, you hear rain. And you look, and you look at the edge of the ship and the rain shooting into the sky. As a storm is coming from below you. The fog's billowing over. Narf, you hear your brother, and Yokai, you look and you see Eerie ring the bell, and you look and you see the captain. And he's just steering the ship, just trying to focus, silent. What would you like to do? Um, I see Narf go kind of without his own willpower towards the door, right? Um, mm -hmm. I know that he wouldn't make a move before we all decided to make a move. And I also kind of may have an idea of what's going on. So I immediately rush up to him and try to, I mean, I don't think it's gonna work, but. Ooh, uh, I do. What? One second. Nope. <laughs> I do need you, before you start anything, to go ahead and roll wisdom save at the top of your turn. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I asked you what do you want to do, and I knew the first thing. <laughs> what do you want to do? Well, here's what you're going to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to roll a wisdom save. Can yeah, I um, thank you so yeah, much. No it would really make my life so hey. much easier oh, if you did that. That's a 14. 14? You just said. As 
<laughs> As in your ear, you Classic. start to hear, I can't believe you're so ignorant. What are you even doing trying to tattoo? I'm kind of just like squeezing my eyes shut. And I don't know if you guys notice it at all, but like my form is kind of like starting to shift a little bit. It's like my hair kind of like grows a little bit and kind of shit. And it just looks like the whole thing is kind of shaking and shimmering as I'm like trying to just barely shake it off. And I see Narf is kind of getting like double vision a little bit. And I'm going to, he's on those stairs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to knock him over because I probably can't grab him or push him. So I'm going to just try and like knock him onto his face. Yeah. Um, go ahead and make a contested strength check with me, you two. Okay. That sounds... Um, if I do it fancy enough, can be dex. Huh? Uh, how do I do that exactly? Oh, uh, you're going to... Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 you're fine. You would roll a d20 and add your strength modifier. All right, hey, sweet. Roll up. Oh, oh, I hey. bet you're about to knock me over because yep. I heard. Not 20. Oh, man. I tried to roll low. I think that was the problem. I got a 16. You got a 16 total. You go over and narf, despite however you feel in, internally, that you know this makes no sense. You know there's no way that your family has come anywhere close to these lands. And you see your brother, you can't help but just want to touch him after all this time. After everyone that you've missed, He's the one you've missed the most, and a tear starts to roll down your face. Yokai comes up behind you, tries to grab you, and grabs the back of you, and you, your your shirt tears, and you some of your your paint tubes fall on the ground and go rolling. And you just ignore it, yes. keep going forward. I guess that's probably not all of my movement, but definitely my action. Um, mm -hmm. I'm. You know, this bonus action. And... Yeah, I mean, I I have the rest of my movement as well. Is there any way I could? get in front of it. Did I did I fall on the stairs? No, you didn't fall, but you got close. You're, okay. there you go. You're right on that tap. You got 30 feet. Right. Uh, yeah, I do. You got, you got 20 more feet. Okay, <clears throat> could I make it at least in front of him? He's currently, man. He's currently, if I, uh, you if you want to uh, give me a narration of how you're going to try and get by him, he's not yeah. necessarily an enemy, but he is an obstacle. Sure, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I'm thinking of it kind of like almost almost comic book style where it's like like the lean forward and like the rip and you kind of just like have that one where you look and you're like, shit, and I want to, I mean, he's taller than me by a, about a head. So is there any way I could just like sneak under his arm and kind of get in front of him and just do this and try and like just stand in front of him, even if he knocks me over, I want to make sure that he's not headed towards like the... Yeah, you know, that's that's easy enough. I'm just gonna... I can make a dex roll or something. Yeah, let's call it a dex roll. I want to <laughs> see if you fall over your feet essentially trying to do this. Possibility. Straight dex? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Pretty easy roll. Yes, it is, sir. Thank you. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty Ooh. 20. Not yeah. a problem. You, you hear a as the, the clothes start to shear off his, uh, his coat starts to shear off and you immediately, you see him start to reach an arm out and you see that as a moment and just slink underneath and put your arms in front of him, bracing. Yep. Is that all you got? I think so, yep. All right, next up we got Magvarf followed by Dara. So Magvar tries to take, uh, this is you know, not the first time that he's done this, uh, but he tries to take a more centralized location within 30 feet of everybody, you know? Okay. And uh, he's going to cast Bless at a second level to give everybody yeah. uh, 1d4 on their saves and attacks. Good. Okay. Um, and he he pops open the, pr the pr protective plate on his chest, uh, dons it as a, as a shield, and uh, as it starts to like glow brightly, I, he's, uh, I think, like sussed out what's going on. Um, Eerie told him that magic wouldn't work the same on him. He would be unaffected by mm -hmm. it. And it seems like everybody else is having a reaction to something that's going on, hearing voices. And, and now like Narf is acting abnormal. So he's just going to take it for granted that something is going is going on. I feel like that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I don't want to metagame. No, sure no. you get so, a gist that something's happening and Narf's not acting right. Right. <laughs> so. Um, he says, uh, push it out of your mind. Listen to me. You're strong enough. Now is not the time for that. Neary, is that you? Brother, it's, it's, me. it's been so long. I have a son now. It, you want to see him? And you watch as he gestures out and a little minotaur with little tiny horns just coming out of his head. 
Uncle Narder? Just like you've always wanted. Yeah. All these years. All these stories. Is Mother here? Next up is, is there anything else you want to do? Um, no, I, if I have any more movement left, I'm going to stand in the door. Where were you at before that? I was, I think I just moved like 10. 20. There you go. 20. There you go. Yep. I just want to occupy the door. Okay. Nice. Can I have Nicole. a quick RP reaction to him? Of course. Um, I can hear him talking, but I can't hear what is being said to him. Yeah. And I'm kind of just like listening to him talk and I'm like, oh yeah, this is exactly what's happening to me right now. And I was like, shit, Magvar, I lied. I know what's going on. He can't fight it. You, we have to stop him. He can't. He can't control himself. All right, Dara, you're up. <clears throat> and um, actually, I need you to make a wisdom save for me. All right, I have advantage. Ooh, as paladin? Huh? As paladin? No, I have a uh, cloak of protection. Ooh. Don't forget that D4 too. And that D4. And D4. D4. Ooh. 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 <laughs> that is it's the last time I brag. Uh, a twelve. <laughs> twelve. Dara, as you get ready, you see Narf, you're getting ready to charge towards him and uh towards your left. You hear Dara Dara, can you get me a, a glass of water, please? And you look and to your left, sorry, your left, just on the edge of the boat. You see your grandmother just sitting there in a chair, pointing at a glass of water that's to her right. I, I can't quite reach it, please. And I need you to use all your movement to move closer to right here. Oh, okay, am I just like coming? No, you you I can need to go out. Yeah. Oh, I okay. fuck! I didn't realize 10, that door was there. 20. You would go right here. Go the stairs where we came. Right here. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, but there's another. And I think as I hear that, maybe okay. before I move there, um, <clears throat> I just go, Gildy? And maybe like just before Dara has snapped out of it, she, she kind of has a look of confusion as she had just kind of revealed the story to mm -hmm. um, the party, you know, about her upbringing and how Gildy is gone. Mm -hmm. But then you know, almost just dead face, just mindlessly yeah. drawn to this. Very bird box, if you've seen that. <laughs> I, I would, oh. and that's how I imagine yeah. that looking a little bit. I mean, yeah, and she, she looks at you, she's like, I'm so thirsty. You have friends. Here, come, come tell me about your friends, please, please. <clears throat> All right, that is everything you can do. That takes your entire turn. Ooh, quick question. Yeah. This isn't a charm, is it? Um, yes, but not in the essence that you would be immune to I it. I have also, I have advantage against being charmed. You already had advantage. Oh, yeah. I guess yeah. I can't have double advantage. Yeah. So. Whatever. <laughs> next up, Mickey, followed by Narf. Top you around, Mickey. I need you to make a wisdom save. Okay. D4. Plus D4. Oh. Well, we're going to need it this round. Um, so a minute. Eight. So 10 rounds of combat. Eight total. Yep. Yeah. Eight total? Yeah. Eight total. Hi, awesome. guys. <laughs> Mickey, you are very. You see your friends just darting off, like, we in, go in. into the fog. You watch them start to just get obscured by the images in front of you, only to. Shop meeting's not over. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do a shop clean after the meeting. I told you guys this. <laughs> you look where Mickey, or sorry, where Mickey, where Narf is walking to, and you think you understand what it is. You see a man standing at the edge, and you see your father screaming at you. One day, you will get what you deserve. We will make sure it happens. We will do every task needed. We will make sure you take your place in this family. And that doesn't draw you in, but it shifts. And you see a woman standing and she has a pregnant belly 
and she has a cloth going across her eyes. Nikki, come here, please. I, I got you lunch. I hope you're doing okay. You, you've been working all day studying. How was your class with the professor? Come on, tell me about it at dinner. And you start gearing that way. I need you to use your movement to go towards right here, the same direction as north. So towards Magbar? Yes. Mickey, it's not real. Can I see Magbar through it all, or do I? Oh, well, you see him. Yeah. But it's not going to stop you. You're going. Let me read this. Do you get a reaction? He well, he, it to move through me. If I don't let him, <laughs> I think he has to make it. I'm hoping. If I can have straight. you make a, I'm going to treat this you like an object that he would be trying to get through. So I'm going to have you do a contested strength check yeah. again. Okay. So I need you to roll strength roll and Magvar. I guess I. I guess I look at Magvar and I say, "You have to get in my way. <laughs> Nothing can stand in my way." Move. What is that? That's three, that's three, dog. <laughs> Ten. Four. Or, uh, seven. Seven. Fuck. Something strange. You've not seen Mickey. You've seen Mickey. Now sad. You see Mickey being the Mickey that you've been tattooing with. You've seen Mickey in a in a way that you know is angry. And you know, kicking people out of the shop, or you know, um, someone not paying him and stiffing him, and you know, they get in a tussle. You've seen that form of anger out of Mickey. You've never seen him so determinedly mad. And as you go to grab him on the shoulders and tell him it's not real, Mickey grabs you underneath your big and small arm and literally throws you to the side. You go five feet. Mickey, this why? Way. Which is like half a block? Yeah, just one. Uh, we'll just call it 10 for brevity. Oh, no. We can call, call five or halfway, and then you occupy the space that he's now in, or was in. Gotcha. Okay. Kind of look down at you painfully. I say, I have to save my mom. Mickey, it's not your mom. Right. Now, you two, could you three, you three do see like the appearance of your family members, of your loved ones, you two see from the edge of the boat rising from the storm. You see these ghostly figures start to sprawl up. You see uh, transparent wings start to flap as they fly up. And you see these translucent harpy-ish like creatures that have gaunt faces but have turned into like skeletons as Oh. They make their appearance right here. Oh. And this one right here. That's awesome. That's cool. That was right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, As these cool. two creatures come up to the sides. Ooh, what is going to happen here? I think I'm. I think they're just going to continue. We both had the nat 20s for our <clears throat> initiative, right? Look at you that. Watch the only as two people that can move. these two creatures push out their hands and this fog just continues to billow out of their arms and they can, it completely obscures the vision in front of you. Your friends become blurry in the distance. Eerie is officially like gone in the midst. All right, that is all they're gonna do this turn is to use, the, they used a dash action to get up. That makes us narf. All right. You're up. Okay, so uh, in this situation, I am freaking out and I'm seeing him. Mm -hmm. uh, what are my options? Do I have um, options? Let me make sure real quick. I tell something. You failed. Um, wait, wait, wait. To the train level, target will be sick. All right. You have to move in that direction. Okay. Towards the creature. Towards here? Okay, and there's either 10, uh, right? Or no, towards the creature. That one there. Correct. Okay. So 10? And like into the, off, off the ship? Once you get to the edge of the ship, okay. you get to make another save. Wait, did he make it past me? Oh, oh. 
Um, if you want to use your reaction to try and stop him or slow him. Yes, I would back. have. Yep. Yeah, go back. Whoop. We're going to have two outcomes here. Oh, God, I hope you work. Back up, baby. On one, on, we're going to have two DCs in this. Okay. If you beat him by, let's see. If he wins, but only by less than five, you slow him. Okay. If it's more than five, he goes. If it, But if you beat him, he stops. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna just roll for it, see what happens. I love these forge dice. Strength, right? I'm not gonna use them for this one. I would like, okay. Yeah, bring I would out like, your shittiest dice. I would like the shittiest <laughs> dice. Yeah. The one you can't stand. Yep. Always rolls bad, get it out here. Oh, I like them all, but these are no forge dice. Okay. You okay? Strength again. Yep, strength. What'd you get? A dirty one, is that a thing? What'd you get? How does a dirty one work? She has, has a negative, negative to her strength. She has a negative oh, to her strength. Oh, there you go. I rolled a two. I got six. Six? Oh, I only had to beat a six? Only had to beat a six. Where is it? Come on, no. Okay, I wait, have, like, wait, 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 wait. Here's the thing, thing, though. I said if it was by five or less, you slowed him down. Sweet. You beat. He only won by five. Okay. It is a whole mess happening right now. Oh, the fog has made your vision obscured. You know where you're going, but you can't really see. You manage to go and reach up, and nothing happens. But you do fall prone right in front of him. As you try to yank, and he yanks off, and you go and you fall prone in front. You trip over something. Yes. Just boom, 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 your hooves. You you feel a, a, a hoof get scra scrapes open your arms, stomps on you a little bit. As you move over her, I will say you lose 10 feet of movement. Yes. Treating her as difficult terrain. Yes. You get to the exactly edge of the boat. It's worth yeah. being treated as an object. Yeah. So, <laughs> now I'm just difficult terrain. Great. How's that? That's, that makes 10. All right, yep. that's 10. Fuck. And then 15, right there on the side. Okay, you're on the side. It is the end of your turn. Yes. Go ahead and make a wisdom save. Okay. I will use the forge dice for these. Because they're awesome. Go. I'm not, though. Uh, 12. <laughs> Not enough. Not enough. You, you, you see um, your brother's son who's just gawking at you. You, you mentioned something about mother, and he looks like, yeah, see, you're Grammy. And he reaches behind your brother and out steps behind, taller than your brother somehow. A beautiful woman. Staying out. Thin, long, brown hair. She you. I understand why you left. Can you just come here, please? I miss you. Mom. Mirakov. That one. Your father's gone. You can come here. He's, it's safe. It's okay. I'm still just like thrashing wildly around for like anything, just like screaming I, narcissism. I, I, I don't know how this is possible, but. You, you see, you're on the edge of the boat and a hand reaches out to you. And then Magvar, you're up. <clears throat> Whoa. That was close. Hmm. I'm just alternating yelling like Narf and Magvar. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, Magvar is like uh, split. He has, you know, Mickey right next to him and Dara's on the other side of the room, still like maybe visible. And he knows that Narf is too close to the edge of that boat and uh, he just says, I don't know what to do. And he reaches in uh, into his chest cavity and grabs the snake and uh, tosses it as close to this door as he can. As close to that door? Okay. Yeah, just sort of like tosses it and then it turns around this way. What's the range on the snakes though? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could, I, I think you can throw it 30 I'm not feet. as strong as Mag, Magvar, but I feel like I could chuck a snake. Can, I think you can chuck a snake. snake. Yeah. yeah, you can eat that. Yeah. 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 Like a dart. We wouldn't. Yeah. We wouldn't. 
Who wouldn't? Yeah, no, we, we would. We would. We would. We would. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh, so, no, I would. I would consensually uh, chuck a snake if that snake was sentient and could speak to me telepathically. Correct. To, Good to tell me to make. that it, it would. <laughs> that story. Yeah, it's got to give the go ahead. Whipping snakes around. <laughs> yeah, give it a go ahead. No, no, no. Sir, please, it's the third time this week. <laughs> please, please, sir, this is a Wendy's. Stop my ears. Only the snakes. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Um, All right. Okay. You throw the then, snake. It lands in front of that doorway. The third. Okay. Snake. Cool. I just <clears throat> I wanted to be able to, like, uh, like move and wrap around Dara's leg or try to wrap it around her Ooh, leg to nice. like, to give her. I'm hoping to give her advantage on that saber to maybe like try to wake her up or give her another saber or something. Okay. But then um, I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna try to step in front of Mickey, I guess. Okay. Back onto the stairs, like to pull him out of the way, and then. Um, do you need me to roll contested or anything like that to to try and move him out of the way? Yeah. Yes, I will. Okay. Boy. Because Mickey has taken up that spot. I'm gonna say you're gonna try and sh shove him backwards to kind of reoccupy that space. Yes. Yeah. Ready? Right? Yep. I rolled a six. Fourteen. Yes. Yeah. One hand, you take your Manual. hand on his chest, push him back, and you take your position again. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm gonna cast a spell. I'm gonna cast Lightning Lure on Narf. Oh, nice. Ooh, to try to pull okay. him back. That is a save or ranged spell attack? That's a saving throw. Okay. okay. What kind? Uh, strength, you gotta be 12. Gotta There's be no 12. attack modifier for that? I guess not, because it's no, a save. No, it's, it's yeah. a save. All right, roll you strength. Be 12. You don't want to be 12. Don't, don't be 12. I think I'd be 12. Oh. No. <laughs> What'd you get? Got 13. Oh. What happens? Uh, anything or is Nothing, it? Nothing, it just like Nothing. fizzles. You watch as you, you, it's hard to see through through the mist that's coming over the, um, over the ship. You point and it just, <laughs> and you manage to try and wrap around his leg and he leans forward and it just breaks the tether easily. All right. Um, anything else, Magvar? That was a lot. I'm not yeah. going to, there's All nothing right. else that I can do. Um, Dara, you're up. Okay. Um, also, just as a note, I read this wrong, and my cloak of protection does give me plus one, but I do have advantage of this anyway for being charmed. Correct. It just would have been a little higher, but I still wouldn't have made it. Correct. Right. Um, okay. I need you, as you see Gildy on the edge, she starts to stand up out of this chair that is on the edge of the boat. Uh, it's been... Why did you leave? Gil Gildy, I, I didn't leave. How, how are you here? What brought you here? You see her stand up. I've been looking everywhere for you in these lands. I've been so hurt. Please help me, help me on, on the ship. As I need you to make your movement that way. I'm assuming you want me like here? Yeah. 10, 20, 30. Okay. And then that is all your movement. Mm -hmm. And I need you to make a wisdom save. <clears throat> and sit and do your turn. Okay. Oh, do I still have for 10 rounds, I think? Mm -hmm. Do you guys still have this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I forgot. Oh People. my god. <laughs> uh, Damn. That is 10. Ten total. Mm -hmm. Still have it. Still stuck. As you and Gildy are trying to reunite. Mickey, as you see your mother, she reaches back, grabs a plate. She goes, "Come on! I know you've had a long day. Come get some food." Um, Mickey is kind of really upset and caught up in grabs his uh, his guns and is drawn to his mother, but is looking for where his father was and just starts making his way wherever he feels compelled to. Okay, nice. Um, I would say that you're you're trying to go towards this individual. Okay. So you would try to make a strength contested roll with Magvar again. Ooh. Ooh. Thirteen? Sixteen. Unmovable. 
How's that interaction go between you two? Magbar, what do you do to stop him? I'm trying to do so many things at this point. I think, like, my back is to Mickey, and I'm just trying to put... Magbar's trying to put his bigger arm in front of Mag... Uh, in front of Mickey to just create, like, as much of an obstacle as possible. And he's, like, leaning... Like, leaning back into him to try to just exert any any pressure that he can to keep Mickey from leaving. Like, he's lost so many people to this already. He's, like, he's committed. And, he, and he's, you can hear, like, the frustration and fear in his voice as he's, like, Mickey, listen to us. Listen to me. It's not your mother. Your father is not here. And then behind your mother, you see a hand go over your mother's shoulder as it just yanks her back and you, her cloth comes off and you see a wounded eye that's been sewn over. And he's like, see what you did to your mother. Mickey <laughs> just starts slamming on Magvar's back and it's just like, damn it. I said, get out of my way. You can't stand in my way. Okay, make a wisdom safe. What do we need you? Oh, it's a natural one. Nat one? Yes. Hey, you are. Add to the tally. Infuriated. Guys. Guys. Infuriated. Nothing no can stop you from trying to get the man. He's just like pleading. He's like, please. Right. Next up, that was Mickey. Narf. Add back up. Oh, no, 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 no. I am sorry. It's my turn. A lot of ones on there. Oh, no. I forgot you even got a turn. <laughs> We're just doing so bad on our own. Is that five yeah, nat so Yes. Does the DM even have no. to go? Yeah. And it's four yeah. nat 20, so that's really okay. bad. Yeah, yeah, that's just me, Scoop. All right, Mickey, or sorry, Narf. Yeah. Your brother comes over to you, gets super close. He grabs your hand, and as it. he grabs it, you feel such a loving embrace. As he pulls you close for a hug, I need you to make a strength contested roll with me. Oh, yes. boy. With less, right? No. Ooh, okay. Oh. Why not? It's, not? it's not a save, right? No. It's contested? Oh, it's contested. Four. Two. Seven. As you watch, as the hand comes out, you all see something totally different. You feel your brother pull you in, a loving, warm embrace, a hug you haven't felt for years. The only thing you've missed from your homelands, you all watch. As Narf is this this harpy-like creature is just opens its mouth, fog pours out. It reaches its hand out. It has long tendrilled nails. It grabs him by the forearm and yanks him over the edge. The last and, second, I just want like his tail to just kind of slip out of my hand, and I'm just like Narf, and I just feel like the last <laughs> little like just a couple like wiry hairs in my face. Like for a second, I think I got you, and then I just like look, and you're gone. And we're going to take a break. No. Oh. Get out of here. Oh. Get out of here. Oh, we'll be back in just a minute. Um, thank you all for watching. Let's come back. All right.
Do you miss playing Dungeons and Dragons or just have a hard time finding a group in your hometown? Maybe you just wish you could play more. On Discord, we created a community of over 100 people who are playing D&D around the clock. By integrating Discord and D&D Beyond, we're able to provide an immersive experience that is the first of its kind. You can create a character from 1st to 15th level and then roleplay 24-7 in our Discord channels while combating monsters, crafting weapons, training new skills, and searching for items across our campaign world. You'll also have the chance to participate in random combat encounters and go on monthly virtual quests. Ever wanted to try your hand at being a dungeon master? Or maybe you're an experienced dungeon master and just want the chance to run more adventures. As a community DM, you can run encounters and virtual quests for the community based on monthly modules written by our very own accomplished plot team. Join us. Join us. Check it out. Join the Discord. Join us. Join us. And let's create incredible stories together. Is money really worth all this? It's not about the credits. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I bet you have. You're not getting the drop on the villains with sounds like that. Your game needs Sirenscape. The Sirenscape online player has a huge library of epic sounds for any situation. Epic games need epic sound. Go to Sirenscape.com to get started today. Hey, Dr. Dane at Cream Tattoo Supply here. Do you need a remedy for your corporate gouging woes and your tattoo supplies? Well, I'm here to tell you, I've got the solution. We've got cream cartridges. And I know what you're saying. Hey, Dr. Dane, is it gonna cost a lot? It's not gonna cost a lot. It's gonna cost just the right amount. Economically friendly. Do you wanna support a tattooer owned and operated business? I know I do. Head on over to creamtattoosupply.com or come to our storefront at 1102 East Prospect Street in Indianapolis, Indiana. Dr. Dane never has or never will be a doctor. If you or someone you love has been affected by Monopoly Tattoo Companies, please go to creamtattoosupply.com for your supply acquisitions. It is said that the ancient Forge Masters would infuse a part of their souls into their creations, imbuing courage, strength, and grace with each strike of the hammer. But somewhere deep in a dwarven hall, the last of the Forge Masters is hard at work.
and we're back in the midst last you guys saw was narf reaching his hand out to this creature as his hand touches and he is yanked oh off and then swarmed this large bounding half minotaur individual is wrapped into the arms of this creature and what Narf sees as a warm embrace, and you guys see, as he wraps his arms around, he digs his claws into Narf and starts to almost drain the essence out of him. Like you had a moment that you wanted to uh, express, correct? Yes. What's yes. the last moment as you're being embraced by this individual? As I'm being embraced by the individual, and I don't see anything that you guys see. I, I, I see my brother, and I, I see my mother, and I see more people that I didn't know could exist at this point. And it was, um, I looked at my brother in the eyes and I say, after all these years, my stupid hobbies getting wrapped up and I could have sent word. So much time lost, like, how are you? He's so beautiful. Mirakov, I'm so sorry. This time I won't leave you again. Your brother pulls you in close. You feel a warm, tight embrace. The warmth of, and you put, he puts his head on your shoulder. And what you all see from the outside is the claws digging into him. And you watch as the face begins to just shrink in, become blackened eyes as the mouth opens up as it seems like it's about to do something. Then we're up at top. Does he have to roll to see if is that the end? That's the end of your turn. I need you to make a wisdom save. Thank you. Don't forget bless. God damn right, I need it. Oh wait, no, no, no. That is correct. That's the end of that creature's turn. It is your full turn. You have that same thing. I was just backing it up shorter. Go ahead and make a wisdom save. save. for a different reason. Same reason, this gotcha. is to end the charm. Gotcha. That looks like 11. That's an 11. You don't want to leave. Why Why would you want to fight against such an amazing experience? Yeah. So next up, we are, I need to roll for two things. Okay. At the end of the ship, you see Eerie goes over to you, Yokai, runs over, takes you and helps you up on your feet. Yes. Not so, totally. Hurry. I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't stop. I, I managed to shake it off. I thought I was gonna go over the edge. Where's everybody else? He's like scanning, looking for everybody through the fog. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna kind of do one of these, like drags me back to my feet and I kind of lift myself off and, and, and kind of keep hold of their arm and point and go, I think I just saw Narf go over the edge. I, I, try, I try to stop, I, I can't see it through this fog. He's, he's hearing voices. Get, you look over the edge and you see a figure. You see Narf in the air, hovering, being embraced by this creature. And I say that, it's like, I think you run over the, and I, and I stop and I look and I go, oh my God, what is, the, what is that? Have you ever seen anything like this? And I kind of just like turn them around to like look at like him kind of being like suspended in the air by this mm -hmm. kind of spectral looking thing. Um, can they give me any information on what this is? Uh, here he goes, I, I, we try to always escape the fog because we never know what's going we, we couldn't get out of the storm. I, I don't know what the, I have no idea. I understand my friend. I just put my hand on their shoulder. And I go, I need you to find Dara. And is it my turn? Um, yeah, so he went f 10 feet over. He would go, yeah, put him just three spaces. Three? Uh, I'm actually, he doesn't know where, so I'm gonna roll D4 to see which direction he goes. Okay. Oh wait, do I know where? Huh? Can I point? Yeah, you could point in, okay. if a general direction. You point in the general direction, he's just going to yeah. move in that area. Okay, awesome. so. Yeah, I'm going to point just diagonal where I saw her last. Okay, he's going to run that way. Okay. So you can move him three spaces that way. Um, it is your turn now. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, I am going to use magic that I haven't really used a whole lot before. Um, but I'm going to cast magic missile at whatever is holding Narf. Whatever's holding Narf? Okay. Yep. Um, automatically hits. You just hit the creature? Yep. All right. Um, go ahead and roll the damage. It automatically hits. It's a yeah, I know. 
Hold on. If I if I hit Narf with one of them, will it wake him up? You have no idea. Mm -hmm. How many hit points you got? Thirty-one. <clears throat> I can spare a few. Bet you can. Look at these oh. missiles. Oh, nice. These old missiles. Um. Oh, that dude's flat. I'm actually, I'm, I'm gonna just try and hit the creature. I think him falling is gonna be better than him getting his life force drained. Uh, okay, so three, d4, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this one each. Okay, so three, seven. Oh, that is nine total. Not nine damage, just Nine like total? Jesus. Yep. Well, I'm glad yeah. that you hit him and not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, yeah. Well, it would have only been one dart. I was just going to, like, sting you on the rear. Gotcha. Yep. You watch as the fog, almost like a softbox, as three uh, globules of missiles shoot out of your fingers. So it's like a triple helix. Just they look you, like tattoo needles. Like big, oh, sharp. Oh, nice. Needles. Even yeah. better. That's it nice. seems like Sick. they just, these sharp pinpoints just spin into each other, lighting up the fog like a softbox. They go and they they stab into the neck of this spectral harpy, and it rises. <laughs> and you, Narf, what you see is like as you're hugging your brother, just almost like explosion, like fireworks in the distance, just to kind of embellish the moment for you. Yeah, so like kind of see that they've made their purchase, and like I said, not having really perfected this magic yet, I'm just gonna be just like, let him go! And just like see them kind of like hit in successfully, and just like almost kind of shock myself that it, that it worked as well as it did. Um, and see him like, narf! And just like yelling into the fog and see if he can hear me at all. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to do? I've got a ton of movement, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, I'm going to use dash as a bonus action and see if I can maybe like race past um, Eerie and see if I can get any closer to Dara. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, as I kind of pass, because I, I don't know, what's the what's the line of sight in the fog? Is it like an actual foot? Uh, okay. It's just disadvantage. So you, okay. I would say instead of 30 feet uh, or 60 feet, you can see 30 feet and it's just disadvantage trying to Perfect. identify Okay, stuff. cool. In that case, yeah, I'm gonna go, I think that's probably here. Um, 10, 20, 30 and move like kind of in their space and give him like a like a pat like like I think I know who she is and just kind of like grab him on the way by and just like keep like not pull them but yeah. just like kind of pat and, and point and run. Not a problem. Um, and in this space and then another one, two, three, and just like start reaching for Dara. All right. That is all you got, Magvar. You're up. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so. Um. It says in the fine familiar spell that they act independently. Mm -hmm. Um. And that they're supposed to have their own initiative order. Would you like me to roll initiative so that uh, I can determine where the, or so you can? Can you remind? Where, can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. Um, my familiars have their own initiative. Would yes. you like me to roll for that, or do you want the snake to act on my turn? Just to have it act on your turn. It's okay, one cool. last thing to keep track of. Cool. Totally snakes fine. Just, on floor. just didn't snakes want to be cheating. Snakes on plane. Of course. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh yeah. yeah so, um, okay. So I'm gonna have the snake move closer to uh, Dara. Okay. So it is right by Eerie, and what's the speed of the snake? Uh, that's a really good question. I don't, I don't know. What do you think, like, We're, 40, 40, 40. 40. Real quick. Are some snakes faster than other snakes? Are some fast snakes Probably, right? This is a speed of 30 feet. 30 so, feet, okay. So, uh, yeah, like one, two, three. I should yeah. be next to Dara. Gets right yeah. behind Dara's ankles as it sh sh goes. It goes in between Eerie's legs, keeps slithering back and forth, and gets up right behind Dara. Okay, um, right I'm going to cast uh, Shocking Grasp through my familiar. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. And uh, at Dara. Well, spicy stuff. Okay. Is that a save or uh, attack roll? It is an attack roll. Are you wearing metal armor? No. Shock and grasp. What are you trying to do? All right. Just trying to wake her the fuck up. Oh, yeah. I mean, you don't have to electrocute her. No, but I get advantage on the roll to hit. Oh, shit. Okay. All right, go ahead and make a melee spell attack. Get her. Get her. Oh, God. Two. It's going to be like seven or six, maybe. Would you, that's not going to hit, I guess. That's so God the it. snake reaches out as this arcane lightning starts to erupt from its mouth as it goes for her ankle and just 
misses completely. As, as she starts to walk forward a little bit more, the ankle just walks out of her path. So, that was your familiar's turn. Anything you'd like to do? Next up, we got um, Dara. Keep that in mind. I... Magvar can't move. If he moves, Mickey's gonna get past. Okay. And then I'll have two people to worry about. He's just, I guess he's just yelling, NARF! NARF, wake up! All right, that's it. Next up, we got Dara. Um, Dara's about to use her movement. Oh, a couple things. For yes. one, you were about to step over the edge as you watch Dara not just step, she pushes herself up. She's standing on the ledge of the ship, getting ready to go towards the embrace of this creature who sees both of you and just says, <laughs> Go ahead and make a wisdom save before you step off. <coughs> that hurt. Don't forget, bless. Oh, nice bless. Who? thank fuck. Um, <laughs> that is a 26. Ooh, okay. like you, why do you need where did that? Where did that come from? <laughs> okay, then. Where was that? You put all of our I, together. Before I stepped up right? the as you see Gildy reaching out, oh, come on, help me up, help me up. All of a sudden you snap back. The fog dissipates completely in front of your face and you just see this creature not even five feet from you that is just hawking and screaming. It's got gaunt features. Its fangs are starting to stick out and its gnarly nails are starting trying to reach to dig into you. Um, I would like to channel divinity. So that is the, oh, no, it's not. You're about to, that was your movement. You got to do it. So you can't move. You can save. Say, you saved. You have your action bonus action. So I don't Sorry. get reaction anymore. No, correct. Okay. Sorry, I was just keeping track of stuff. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I would like to. Um, What's your channel of divinity? Yeah, I am going to do, hold on, I need to decide which one. Uh, I'm going to use, and I'm hoping this is right, uh, control at dead. As an action, you could target one undead within 30 feet to force a wisdom saving throw. On a failure, the target must obey your commands for 24 hours or until you use this feature again. Oh, I like it. Big what is your intentions with this? Um, I would like to dispel it and... Uh, dispel what? The uh, hand creature. In front of okay. Me. Is this what it looks like? Is this like accurate? Uh, no, that one also looks like the other one. Oh, okay, so um, I ideally, being in control of it, um, I can get it to stop attacking us and potentially break any concentration of it trying to um, do it again. Okay, I like it, I like it. Is there a save? Is Yes. Okay. Roll a wisdom <clears throat> saving throw. That is a 16 plus. Do, 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 do. Wisdom has mm -hmm. a minus one, so that is a 15. It beat it. So. All right. Oh, yeah. I love the idea, though. Oh. How many times a day can you do that? Just once. Man. Nice try. Nice mm. try, Dara. Oh, no. Uh, short rest. Short, short rest. rest. Short okay. rest. Oof. All right. Twist right. that. So, um, <laughs> so nothing happens. Also, I didn't read the last part. <laughs> Uh, but an undead with a uh, challenge rating of course. equal to or greater than four is immune. Yeah. yeah. So don't know if it even would have done anything. I don't want to fight right. But it's CR4. Like, All right. Um, <laughs> no. It's, it's the right. first real combat. Um, <laughs> okay. I am. That is, is that your action? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. what was my movement? Your movement was moving forward. You have to use all your movement to get up there. I had to move all my... That oh, my that was right turn. up there. So I would say getting up on the pit banister, difficult drain. We'll call it 10 feet. You have 20 feet <coughs> left. Awesome. Um, and I think I am going to um, look at Yokai and say, like, I mean, obviously I noticed Yokai there, right? Uh, yeah, as you, you come to... Now. Yeah, yeah uh, and I just, like, shake out of it and I'm like, 
you know, I think I first immediately see what's going on, um, try to control and dead. It doesn't work. Maybe I'm too distracted. And then I say, we need to get away from this thing. The closer we are to the edge, the worse. You're back. Yeah. Yes. Well, High five. Right. That's what it was going to be. <laughs> Good. Uh, As one it's finger. Just going to try to snap out of it. But you're back. Good. Um, we need help. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Then. Uh, and I am going to move further away from the ledge. I think maybe beep beep. Perfect. Right you step oh. over a snake that is just like sitting it coiled up at your ankles. Oh, and then I maybe <coughs> notice it and look up and say, "All right, Magbar's good too." Um, he's fine. It doesn't seem like he's affected by this at all. Okay. Neither is so, a weird electric snake. And in initiative. So I would have seen this happen to Narf, but I would not have seen this happen to Andy. I think it took me first, right? Correct. Well, it took Narf first, then you, then Mickey. Yeah. Right. So Okay. Or all simultaneously because it's kind of the same round. Yep. All right, so that's all you. Mickey, you're up. Okay. So, Mickey, um, it's a hard time getting past Magbar, and so he's going to do like a data from Goonies kind of move with like slick shoes, and he's going to cast grease. So he's got like little, little grease pumps in his shoes. Oh, he's man. Kinda, <laughs> and, uh, okay. Put grease on their Magbar's feet. To try to knock him prone. Oh, oh God. Man. That's such a good idea. Huh? Does he make a wisdom No, it's at the end of his turn. So he has to use all his movement to get so there. You gotta make a, um, oh. a deck save. Yep. She did she gotta make a wisdom save because she was getting ready to go over the edge. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And not because okay. it was the end of her turn. Thirteen <clears> decks. <throat> so I gotta beat a thirteen decks, huh? Yeah. For this. Oh, you're this not spell. <laughs> As Mickey stomps on his foot and it's like Slick <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> Four. <laughs> All of a sudden, oh. Magvar, you're almost like trying to shake him and your feet go out from under you and you ass over tea kettle. Your head hits the back and you slide down the back of the steps and you're sitting at the back of the steps. As he's falling, I want to like put my hand like on his back and like kind of use him to like pull vault myself like over him. Okay, <laughs> nice. Like, to clear the, the grease. Parkour. Parkour. All right, so Magvar falls prone and then sl slides down the steps. Mickey, you go and you, as pushing him forward, you just pull vault off of him. Go ahead and I'm gonna, we're going to say that this is an acrobatics check to okay. see how this goes for you. Using, uh, I don't think you may be proficient in using Magvar as a pull vault. Okay, so just acrobatics check. Stranger yeah. Things, man. Stranger you're, things. you're correct. It's a... Uh, 15? Turns out, actually, you are pretty <laughs> proficient in using Magvar as a pole vault. So as he starts to go down, almost like boom, 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 hit. Super Mario jump. Yeah, you right don't lose over. any movement. Go ahead and move your, your 30 feet in the direction. Great. As you look in the distance and you see your father, he's like, you can't even make a gun. You're not even good enough for a mark. Let's find out. And I pull my guns and I cock them and I just keep moving forward towards them. Okay. As he as he moves forward out of my range, can I take an attack of opportunity? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's he's technically you, now ten feet away. I, so yes. Well, but if he yeah, if he jumps over me at some point, I imagine that I have. Yeah. Like, well, he's ten feet away. He moved out of your range. This is all five uh, ten feet instead of five. So yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. So I just move as far as I can towards where I can go. Okay. So I yeah. can take it. Attack? You can. Correct. Okay. Cool. But I th I think I th you're right. I'm prone, so I take it at disadvantage. I think. That is correct. Is that right? Okay. Cool. Nobody fucks us up harder than ourselves. Eh? God no, damn right? it. Seven. Um, it's <laughs> like the greased up death guy from <laughs> the family guy. We're just like, <laughs> and just can't, can't find his legs, can't hit him, can't do anything. I look back at Magbar and I say, don't stay in my way again. Right. Magbar, or wait, dude, Mickey, Narf. Yes. You're up. Buddy. All right. All right. Is there a wisdom throw at the end of the turn? That yeah, you're at you're at where you would end up. You make a wisdom throw to see if you can break the charm. Okay. Let's hope luck is on my side. At least these forged dice. Be on somebody's side. Do I still have bless? Does that happen? Yeah, you uh, yeah, bless. you still have bless. Do I still use bless? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. yeah. every time. Put, put it on. Put, do that. put it on there. Mother. Seven. With the with bless. Your, your new nephew oh, 
Reek yeah. looks up, just like, he, he just joins in on a leg hug on you guys. Like, I'm so yeah, happy to meet you, sense. Uncle Narf. Mm. And just a hand comes over the shoulder. You've been missed so much. I can't wait to hear your music again. All right, that is everything you got. Um, Eerie is seeing that Dara is now conscientious. Man, I'm gonna give him a roll. Hi. He's going to shoot a crossbow at someone. Hi. He hits Narf low. He goes for mm -hmm. the spectral. Mm -hmm. okay. That's a natural mm -hmm. 20. Oh, I got hit. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like well, no, no, no. It doesn't count. That was oh, just. That was just. Me. Luckily. Okay. Yeah. Luckily. No. Now that is. It, one second. That got landed behind stuff. That's a nine oh. plus. Six, fifteen. Whoa, points of damage? No, 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 no. That's oh to gosh. hit. Oh, I, for some reason. Fifteen? Okay. Does that hit? Oh, and what is my, oh, I'm I sorry. He's my a, AC, right? He's actually a disadvantaged. Okay. Yeah, roll. Okay, that's better, so he still hit. So Okay, so like how explain the uh what am I what am I doing all right, have to see that, if you're not? That's a number, if his number you're doing meets it beats it, right? Yes. So that number, if it's 15 or higher, it hits you. All right, all right. so it's 15, it hit me. You roll 15, oh you take four points of damage, okay. as all of a sudden, like, you're hugging your brother, and you have your nephew on your side, and your mother's hand, and right where your mother's hand is, you feel a sharp pain get stabbed into it. I want you to go ahead and make a wisdom save for me real quick. Okay. Don't forget that D4. And that D4. Man, you are blessing us right in here. the game and out of the game. Yeah, you are, bro. <laughs> you're like... <laughs> I'd be doing God. the most, but doing nothing at all. I just pee. <laughs> Dirty 20. There it is. Let's okay, go. so out of there, dude. You, you all of a sudden get yanked oh, out of this is. this experience. You, you, on one side, your family's gone. Mm -hmm. They're not there anymore. On the other side, you are now hugging this gaunt harpy creature that is completely <laughs> like going towards your neck as you now have a uh, crossbow bolt in your shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's his turn. Oh, sweet. So, <clears throat> excuse me, top of the order, Yokai, what would you like to do? Yes, um, did Mickey make his wisdom saving throw? Did you, uh, no you did not. No, I didn't take my movement either. You didn't take your movement? No, I, ju I jumped over him, did that count as all my movement? Yeah, that, I mean, that was three squares. Okay, steps. okay. Yeah. But if you didn't make your wisdom save... I didn't, no. You didn't try to? Okay, no. Please go ahead and roll. Right. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Don't forget bless. That's, uh... <laughs> bless it! I didn't do this for nothing! Fifteen. Fifteen. You start to walk towards the edge, Mickey, and all of a sudden, you... Your father's not there. He's gone. Your mother, none of that. You look back, you see Magvar on the ground, you remember what just happened. And you see Narf hanging off the edge. Okay. Sorry about that. That was going back forward. We're back at the top, correct, as Yo at Yokai? Is that where we le just left off? Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Everybody is officially clear to the charm, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, really? Mm-hmm. <coughs> we, awesome. we did it? That's it. We win now. Um, okay, okay, so... But there's still a monster in front of me, though. There's still a monster in yep. front of you, and Narf is still dangling over the air, being held by a creature. Okay, I think even if I got over there, I wouldn't really be able to do anything to help you, is the thing. So I'm gonna try and knock a little bit of pain into the guy in front of me. Um, I guess, I mean, Magic Missile works pretty well, and I've got three first level spell slots, so I'm gonna do that again. Okay. okay. Um, but at the guy in front of me. Magic missile? Yes, please. Go ahead. Start, start, start. All right, I'm gonna see this thing that definitely just tried to pull Dara over the edge and kind of um, focus hard enough that like I conjure these these missiles up again. And this time they feel just like a little bit smoother as I know how to direct them mm -hmm. and I know how to conjure them. Mm -hmm. And I see like these kind of like sharpened, spinning, like a little too wide tattoo needles that kind of fly up on my face and I just send them all out. Awesome, um, go ahead and roll. Give me something decent. 
Seven. Seven total? Yep. Man. All right, so you send out this 14 round shader thick boy from Ooh. Cream Tattoo Ooh. Supply. Oh, like uh, yeah! One of my favorites. <laughs> and goes and rocks this thing, man. It just gets pummeled, stabbed in each of its shoulder, and then stabbed right in the gut. And it just Blow is out, a. baby. Blow out. Smithereens. Nice. It's pretty hurt, son. It's pretty hurt. Good. So, Can next I... up, anything else you'd like to do? Yeah. Um. I'm going to, uh, Magvar is still on his ass, eh? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm gonna just use Dash to try and get back or into this area as quickly as I can. Okay. Um, hopefully just deterring that guy. Let me see if I can get some sort of... You can move through them, by the way, to save peace. Save. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to. Is this a thing, though? I feel huh? like I was... Not for this case. Oh, okay, cool. It probably it might have been, but... All right. Um, I'll just do, yeah, 10, 20, and then... 30, step one, can't really show okay. there. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here because that'll give me sight on both of them and first party. That's 40? Yep. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to do? I don't think so. Nope. Right. Um, how does, uh, <clears throat> what is Eerie doing? Eerie was running over to uh, get Dara, but he has a crossbow, uh, like a, a large crossbow. He just took the shot of the crossbow here. Yes. Okay, got he it. shot, he's, he's sitting there and he's like, I'm sorry. I I didn't know what else to do. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that he was still like. To be fair, I tried to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> you did your best, bud. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Next up is Magvar followed by Dara. Okay. So Magvar stands up, uses yeah. like half of his movement, right? As far as you're aware, you, Mickey, I don't know if you would know he's coherent again or not, depending on how he reacted at the end of his turn. What do you think Mickey would have done once he came out? I think if he came out and realized he would maybe look back at Magwark and like look around, just kind of like confused, like mm -hmm. where the fuck am I? Like what's, what just happened? Okay. I'd, I'd say that you can discern that however you think Magbar would as he sees Mickey literally and metaphorically lost in the space. I think if Magbar saw him turn around mm -hmm. to yeah. look, <clears throat> he would take that as a yeah. As, a, as a signal, probably. Yeah. Um, something happened. Just because something happened, right? Like, <laughs> whatever it is, something has happened. And uh, I, so Magbar would step this way. He's got 15 feet left. I don't know how close that gets him to, like, the, the bow of it. I'd say you're on the edge. You're, on, you could be on the bow if you want. I could? Okay. Is this creature within 15 feet? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Then I'm gonna cast Lightning Lure to try to pull the both of them back to one Ooh, ship. Nice. Nice. And I'm gonna nice. target the creature, not Narf. So the creature, not one. Narf. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, and it's a save, right? Yeah, it's a DC 12, strength save. That's a two plus nice. one. Okay. Ooh. As you <clears throat> shoot out this Lightning, you know, it is one of the last chances that Narf might have before he goes plummeting. It shoots out of your hand. You watch it wrap and coil around it. It pulls them back, and you pull them both 10 feet towards you directly. Now they are on directly on the ship. So nice. they're right, right beside you. Let's okay, go. cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think yes. uh, Magvar like steps, steps up to onto your, the... To Magvar's right. To Magvar's right. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Um, Ish, right? Ish, yeah, they're right there. Okay. Um, he steps up onto the, whatever the railing is, mm -hmm. and he uh, he whips out the energy, and he's like, give me back my friend! And then he just, like, pulls with both hands and, like, falls backward onto the rail to, like, Ooh. wrench everything that he can. Nice. Get like, does here. he put his feet up each there. on it yeah. and just is like, Ugh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You All see, right. like, the magic stretch taut, and you hear, like, the creaking of, like, muscle, uh, wooden muscle against metal as it's like, Ooh, a Nice. Up. All right, is that all you got, Magvar? That was a lot. I'm not that was, saying that's it. it. All right. I believe that was all legal, but that. <laughs> Dara. I'm exhausted. You're oh, up. <laughs> Great. Um, so, after I've seen that Yokai has session? attacked <laughs> this guy, how close to the edge of the ship? Is it and how far like it's about at the it's about probably ten feet off the, the edge of the ship. Okay. 
Say, uh, yeah, about then 10 feet off the edge. I want to turn around and okay. um, shoot it with my longbow. Okay, easily. Um, it's only four, he's about 40 feet away from you entirely. Great. I am going to do that. Go ahead. Uh, roll a disadvantage because it's at a distance. Cool. Well, can I use my movement book first? Mm-hmm. Can I use movement to get closer then? You're you're welcome to. It's just because the the fog is just blurring. Oh, it's perception. the fog, not the Correct. distance. Yeah, I sorry. See. Okay, I was like, uh, um, okay. No, it's not that. It's not even that far. It's just because the fog is in your way. Well, then. is it an attack? Because you get bless. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My God, Magvar. Pharaoh. <laughs> awesome. Um. <laughs> Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Great, that is still a 14, though. 14 hits, actually. Ooh, yes. Nice. Okay. They're squishy, squishy things. Perfect. Could have fooled so, us. Yeah. And oh. They haven't even hit you. You've been doing this to yourself. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that is 10 points of damage. We're just kicking yeah. our, we'll kick our own ass. <laughs> yes. uh, I'm kicking my own ass, anyway, do you mind? Kick our ass, it's gonna be us. All right, 10 points of damage. Mm-hmm. Rolled All right. seven on that D8. Mm-hmm. You. Feels good. You draw your string back, you immediately, you don't see it for detail, but you see just a silhouette in the fog, and you follow it for a second as it seems to be trying to move, and it goes through the fog. You watch it as the arrow disappears into a mist, and all of a sudden, silhouette's gone. You can go ahead and take him off the board. As Ooh, you nice. nice. I apologize, I forgot to roll damage with the whip against that one. Ooh, go ahead. Okay, it's a D8. Oh, yeah. A D8? Let me let me just make sure. It is D8 lightning. Okay. Three. Three points. Woo, it's hurting. It's screaming. Next up. Is there anything else you want to do, Dawn? Um, yeah, so I haven't used my movement. So I think I would like to use my movement to get closer to this action. Okay. Um, so can I do one, two, three? Okay. Um, and would, I don't know how you handle this, but, um, planning ahead. Okay. I'd like to, can I use my bonus action to put my longbow away? Yeah, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. Okay. I do normally in my home games even, like, uh, it's just a bonus action to switch Because I'd probably like to make a melee <clears throat> weapon attack in my next one. As yeah. I normally I say it's a bonus action to just switch your weapons. To just switch your weapons? Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, so that is what I would like to do. You immediately... Put up your longbow, bring out your- your, Great sword. Your great, oh. Sword as tall as you are comes from behind you. That's all you got? Yes, that's all all I've got. Dara, Mickey, you're up. All right. I see uh, Magbar pull Narf back over the edge, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not even gonna move for I am. I'm just gonna turn and start shooting. All right. At the, the harpy. All right, go ahead and roll, roll an attack. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. I still got Bless, right? Yeah. Yeah, you Call. do. <laughs> yep. Ooh, it's not super great. It is that disadvantage, by the way. Is that disadvantage? Yeah, because the fog. Okay. Uh, well, then that's, that's not going to be We'll great. roll it again. Just in case you crit fail. <laughs> yeah, dude. What is it? For who? <laughs> oh, it actually is worse somehow. <laughs> 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 Um, Dude, tell yeah. me to shut up. What is tell it? Me, tell <laughs> me it's gone. <laughs> Whose side are you on? <laughs> oh, shit. Go be on that side. Jesus. How about that? Go sit on the DM What's side. What's wrong with this side? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I just <laughs> killed something. Oh my yeah. god. Well, that's a 10. I'm 10 so total? Yep. Yeah. You watch Dang. the bullet just split open the fog for a second, and the fog re acclimates and just swallows it entirely. Doesn't seem to make any kind of purchase on anything. All right, I'm gonna try my other one. My was that a natural one? No, it was a two. Went from a three oh, to a two. That too. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh yeah, yeah. It's like that. All right. Like, um, so I'm gonna use my bonus action to shoot yeah, my, uh, my my other my my fire cannon. All and right. And you have to make a dex save of thirteen. Dex save thirteen. Yep. Hello. That is a fifteen. Okay. Nothing happened? You take half. Take half? Yeah. All right. Um, so that is going to be... So that's four. So you take two. Two. 
two points of damage. Two. It starts to. Uh, it's, it's, it's screams getting softer as it's losing life. Or it is barely hanging on, man. Um, anything else, Mickey? Um, that is both. No. Your, okay. Nope. Next up is Narf. Yes. It's your turn. All right. You're conscious. I'm back to it now. This creature, at this point, after being hit so much, yanked across. It has let you go. Uh-huh. You were you've landed on your feet on the boat with this thing in front of you. Yeah. What would you like to do? Oh, I want to punch it with something sharp. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Go ahead and roll an attack. All right. I'd like to ready my dagger and pull my hand axe, sorry. And that's a 1d6 uh, plus 2. Where is that at? That guy. That guy. That guy, it's a regular dice. I'm getting all turned up here. Ooh. That one yet? Yeah. All right. Wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Gotta roll to hit. I got yeah, some you hit points, right? You need to roll to hit. So yes, roll gotcha. There we go. All right. I'm getting too excited. I want to do oh, something. Oh, yeah. Man. What are you oh, using? Yeah, no kidding. You haven't gotten to do anything. I've just been getting messed up this whole time, man. Be like that. Let's look at that. That's a. Don't forget, bless. <laughs> Seventeen. Oh, that hits. You can roll your damage now. All right. Do it. Do it. Which, uh, what is it you're using? Using my hand axe. All right. You pull your meat cleaver off your side. You go and you slice it. Go ahead and roll your damage. Three. How would you? Did you add anything to it? It would be three plus your strength modifier. I don't have one. A strength modifier? It's zero. Okay. Yeah. What about proficiency damage? No, no, not, not, not for damage. damage no. no. You will, how do you want to kill this creature? Oh Just boy. Narf kill, yes. kill stealing everything. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just right out of What the- happens as you draw your cleaver, Narf, and you give the last blow to this creature's life force? Well, before I kill anybody, I say some pretty dope shit. What do you oh. say? Okay. Well, I mean, that's why we nice. kill yeah. Stealing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. So look at him and say, it's quite a nice illusion you played there. One that I can respect. But I, what I can't respect is that you just mess with my family. You said you wanted to hear my songs? Well, when you don't hear them anymore, they still play. It's not for you. I take my cleaver and I bring it up through his chin. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And I lift him up into the air. And for the first time, everyone hears me go, Rah! A s- and, uh, Pull it that way and split his face up. Seth. Oh, Ooh. man. That's your first kill? Yeah. Oh. Murder's Club. Murder's Club. I hope I'm covered in yeah. blood now. Yep. Or whatever. Oh. Oh. As you, as you sure. pull it back, you, the Something. face splits and the entire apparition of this creature just <laughs> disappears as well as the fog surrounding you just falls to the base. The rain hitting the bottom of the ship coming upwards, you watch, disappears. And you guys are out of combat. Good lord. God damn. You, you wow. see, God damn, God damn. You see Eerie puts up his crossbow bolt. If uh, we could not do that again, that would be great. Are you okay? Uh, I mean, believe it or not, I've been worse. About 200 feet in the air worse? <laughs> Well, probably not, honestly. <laughs> probably not. You all look to the bow at the front of the ship and you see the captain who is sit- standing there just full force guiding. I'm sorry. I had to make sure I drove this boat. What do you guys do? That's you're out of combat. Cry. Cry. <laughs> all for crying. Um, was, with advantage, because we're, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're very used to it. I've got some wounds to lick, I'm sure. Okay. I'm not sure who's hurt or anything. Is there anything that you'd like to do before the journey continues? Only emotionally. <laughs> rest of us are uh, How much do you need, Nerf? Uh, I'm down four, so I'm at 27. Great. Then uh, Dara, you know, takes her trusty flask. Oh, no. <laughs> Open <laughs> up, buddy. Hey, go. There you go. Yes. And uh, gives a good old lay on hands to Narf for four points. It's been a long day. 
Yeah. And says we're gonna need every bit of energy before we actually get off this. Why not? Oh, <laughs> oh my lord. Oh my lord. <sighs> it is bitter. It tastes as if you're swallowing brass cleaner. Mm. But you feel better. Yeah. So many, yeah. so, there's so many ways to describe. Ooh. So many ways. Battery acid. <laughs> they heard citrus dust Don't award my lord this like that. Don't. Come on. That's your lord and savior. Nope. My lord and savior, Jepson. Dara. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're you. welcome, buddy. It's a. Uh, you're not sure for the mixture of this air sickness. Or what she just gave you. It's kind of sitting in her stomach a little funny. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So, it goes through the day. You guys are kind of um, absorbing what you've seen, trying to now figure out what's real, what's not, what other dangers lie afoot. As the day and the sun start to fall, you're standing at the front of the ship. As you look down, I want Mickey and I want you all to give me a perception check, actually. Oh, I love these. So do you. Oh, so do so I. Great. Cool. Really? Nah. I rolled my first nat one as well. Nah. No, we got two yeah. nat ones. Oh, good job, guys. My second. <laughs> I know it's the best. <laughs> You're both like, yay! Wait. <laughs> We're so awesome at D and D. Do we still have bless? Hmm. Do we still have? Uh, no, not for this. Oh. Not for skill checks. No. Oh, and it's been so long. That? Bless is gone. Yeah, yeah. Seven saves. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. All right. What do we all got? Eighteen. Seven. Okay. Seven. I got seven. Seven. Yeah, I got some more. Sure. Gentlemen. I feel like you two are doing something that you aren't actually looking over the edge. What What do you think Mickey and Magvar are doing at this time? I think maybe we're regarding each other given our last interaction. Yeah, I, yeah, I think maybe we're like talking about something technical, but really what we're doing is trying to just like be normal around each other for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, in that silent, unhealthy, toxic way that <laughs> where instead of addressing what happens, you just you just gloss act, over it. <laughs> act like everything's been normal this entire time. Yeah. Get back on the ship. Yeah. I want you, I'm going to have you lean into me real quick, if you could. Yeah, bud. There you go. No, the, the mic can hear it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you go over the edge. Look at these amazing stuff. dice. Oh my god. Ooh. Are those from Forge Dice Gaming? These are from Forge. That's incredible. Wow. Were they made especially That's for the Incubus? Forks. Man, mm. they sure were. That's great. I cast I've identify exactly on these. <laughs> I cast identify and I found out that it's custom resin and a custom paint for the numbers. My goodness. Whoa, oh, this is incredible. a great price. It's a truly <laughs> <laughs> Um Dara looks over the edge and um, says, I hate to tell you this, I need to turn around. Turn around. Um, it hasn't passed you yet. It's it's kind of in the distance, but you see them coming oh. towards you. Never mind. I hate to tell you this. Yes. It's time to drop. Now? Can now. you, Dara, now. please be more specific? Uh, Our lack of transparency has led us into a lot of really bad situations. <laughs> 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 Whatever do you mean? <laughs> um, Dara, you know, as Magbar says that, Dara grabs Magbar and drags him like right next to her. Says, do you see that? Do you see those golden steeds? Those three golden steeds on top of them, golden warforged? We have to go now. Which which direction is it given the direction so, of the ship? Huh? Okay, so coming directly towards you as you guys are going towards, um, oh, I think it, I, uh, with a whisper, I got a little, I got a little lost, but yeah, they're-, they're my, they, Bad oh, here. I'm so sorry. There's <laughs> whispers uh, don't happen very well with me. Wi w I'll be more conscious of that. Sorry. Yeah. As the year, the year, as you look into you, you take your one eye and you just focus in. I'd like to say you squint, but there's no squinting. It's more so just a refocusing. <laughs> you hear like a eerie, <laughs> like a metal truck. Get closer. <laughs> as you look in the distance, you see there's three golden steeds that are galloping full force towards you, and on top of it. Three Warforged that look odd, 
like nothing you've ever seen. It's hard to discern, but like something about them just doesn't match up. And that's what you see. Okay. They're in front of us, and we see them like this? Yeah, okay, so... How if, far off the ground are we? You guys are probably about 100, 200 feet off the ground. You're kind of looking at them down at this angle. Okay. And they are probably about... Um, probably three... Probably about 200 feet forward okay. than down from you. Got it. But they are going full force in the direction that you came from. Okay. Yeah. We need to descend immediately. All right, let's let's get guns. Everybody have their their feather fall token. Yeah. All right. Yep. So, Dilidris, here's you guys contemplating this, and goes, "You make an early jump. You are you sure? Our quarry is beneath us. Be safe. That is it. What is what is it you guys do?" So how are we jumping? How how far can we fall? Synchronized. You can far, fall I'm like from almost any height. All right. Mickey's just mm -hmm. gonna run and jump off the edge. Oh. Oh. Full okay. swan dive. Yeah. <laughs> you guys watch as Mickey steps back, gets a running start, leaps over the banister, and just whoo, and he's gone. I see you guys just watch right. as he starts to take off uh, uh, down into the floor below. Mm -hmm. What's everybody do? Full send. Yeah. Off the edge. Yeah, that's yep. where it is. Here we go. Yep. Full yep. send. Um, and wait, Magvar is going to take one second. He grabs the chest of gold that we have. Okay. Oh, I thought that was just stuff. It, well, if I don't have that, I'm going to... I need something heavy. Oh. So if I don't have the chest, oh. if that's someplace no, else, I'm just going to grab, like, a couch. Or something. A couch? Anything that I can like. I'll say there's a couple barrels. The shop meeting. There's a couple barrels on the top of like that are just scattered around the ship that you managed to grab one. Okay. I have never been on it. Magvar has never been on an airship before, to my knowledge. Um, he would like to jump off and dive bomb those three with this heavy ass barrel. Oh. Okay, you are kind of, it wouldn't be landing on top of them. They're still coming, I mean, depends. I mean, I'm willing to wait a second. Okay. Like, cause I assume that we're gonna be going faster on the ship. You're kind of, yeah, going to floating, meet. right? I'm so I'm like, just trying to like triangulate. Okay. I'm I realize gonna, how ridiculous this I've, is, but I like, know. you know I, what I mean? Okay. I love this. Go are you gonna, yeah. good. Are you gonna use Featherfall at all? Um, maybe at the last minute. I'm gonna have you go ahead and awesome. roll. <laughs> Let's go. We're gonna. Let's go. I'm gonna have you roll I'm percentile for check for me. Percentile check. I don't know what much to accredit it towards otherwise. Love a good percentile check. Can I give myself percentile guidance? And what, uh, what's that? A D4? Yeah, it would be a D4. You can add. Yeah, you can throw a D4 on top of that if you so wish. <laughs> a D4 on top of a percentile. I love it, dude. Okay. Take me. I will take it. This is not Rule of cool, shop. man. It's not in the shop meeting. Um, 51. Okay. What? Noted. As you cool. you watch it. as he mind. takes this, this barrel underneath his arm, goes and steps on top and just launches himself in a general direction. We are a mess. All right. You guys all follow suit. Any yeah. anything do you guys do? Yes, right before, um, you know, as soon as Mickey goes to jump off of the... Uh, ship. I am collecting my uh, tubes that I was dropping my my paint tubes. Okay. And I look at Mickey and I go, "Of course he would do that." And then I run after him. And I jump off as well. All right. You just. <laughs> it's Yokai and Dara. Not hold hands. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 Can I? I'm Adorable. sorry. Can we give out inspiration at the table? I would really like to give out inspiration. You know what? Yeah. Sure. That's that okay? fun. Yeah. yeah. You can just have a, have a D6 that you guys can use in the, this next oh, game because yeah. Oh, yeah. we're going to end it there. No! 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. The oh, worst. Right, wow. Right? Midair. <laughs> midair. <laughs> midair. Midair. Wow. Yeah. We're going to say midair enough. Hand. <laughs> Don't get enough midairs. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll Thank you guys all for watching. Look at this. You. We'll see you next week. Woo. That's awesome. Thank you.